does the type of coupling matter? We're supposed to use the same coupling when we calibrate versus inspection. Really? Before we get into this, just remember, always follow your procedure. The point of the video is to illustrate some practical differences and not to override the instructions from your level three. So if your weld inspection procedure is written to a code, it probably says something like, thou shalt use the same couplant during calibration as during thy examination, which is exactly what it says in ASME, AWS, and CSA codes. Now here I'm talking about the couplant between the wedge and the test surface and not what you put between the probe and the wedge. Presumably the reason behind this rule is to maintain a consistent sensitivity, but does it make a difference? Let's test some common couplants. The most common one is going to be water. It's cheap, it's safe, and it's got low viscosity, so it's really easy to pump. One step above that, we've got the powdered stuff. Bag A, bag B, mix in a gallon of water, or if you're in cold climates, you mix it with a washer fluid. And on the upper end, I'm going to use this high viscosity stuff from Echo Ultrasonics. This is Echo Pure, but it's the highest viscosity version of that that they make. I really like this stuff because it really clings to the surface and a little bit goes a long way. A quick note on viscosity. All of these have different viscosities. The word viscosity means resistance to shear. So something with a lower viscosity has less resistance, which means those little particles can kind of roll or slide over each other and make that sort of pouring or waterfall effect. As an illustration, if we put very accurately measured drops of each of these on a glass sample, you can very easily visualize that obviously the high viscosity coupling has the highest resistance to shear. For a practical comparison, I'm going to set up a TCG using a 5 megahertz half inch transducer on a 45 degree wedge. I'm going to use this ERVT block from PH Tool. The block was a joint venture between Holloway NDT and PH Tool. It is specially designed for ASME piping weld inspections for pipe over 20 inches, meaning we get to use a flat block. And we put six thickness steps in the block to give you lots of coverage. We're going to use water as a baseline. I'm going to set the TCG up using the one inch step. And here you can see the three holes on the first and second leg. And then I'm going to dry the water off the block and the probe. I'm going to apply the mixed couplant and you can see there's basically no difference. Finally, I'll run the high viscosity couplant. And once I work that probe into the surface again, it's basically the same. I will say this about the high viscosity couplant. As soon as you put the wedge on top of it, you're going to feel like it's gliding on the surface. With the high viscosity stuff, you kind of have to push the probe in. You're kind of looking for that wet sandpaper feeling. That gives you a really good indication that you've got intimate contact between the wedge and the surface. So those three couplants were basically the same. And even if we try something like high temperature couplant, again, there really is no difference. All of these have different viscosities, but basically the same results. And viscosity is the main visual cue we have to tell the differences between couplants. But it's not viscosity that matters, it's actually acoustic impedance. Now remember, acoustic impedance is density times velocity. And all of these have a acoustic impedance of about 1.5 mega rails, which in US units is, I don't have to look this up. I don't know how you guys do it. If coupling efficiency and sensitivity depend on acoustic impedance, and most common couplings have around about the same acoustic impedance, then why do we care if we switch fluid? Because most couplings doesn't mean all couplings, and the codes have to accommodate for this. There are some special purpose high acoustic impedance couplings that may make a little bit of a difference. For a DIY example, we'll use Honey. It has an acoustic impedance of about three mega rails or double what these have, and it does make a little bit of a difference, about two decibels. But does this actually make any difference? The finger pressure in conventional manual UT or the spring tension of a scanner that's kind of wiggling and jiggling its way around the pipe, that's probably gonna produce more variability in the sensitivity than changing the couplant. I think this is one of these things that on the surface, it makes sense. But once you spend some time experimenting, the practical differences you're going to see are minimal. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.